Thanks a lot. That was nice. Got no trots here. Uh, though, although my last job as a member of the uh, Plum Board of Directors was to put forth a motion to buy uh, rainbow trouts, pillow-shaped rainbow, uh, rainbow trout-shaped pillows. Excellent. We'll have. Well, yeah, that's a bit too dark. Maybe no. I like it dark. Why not? Can you? Okay. Uh, let's get some technical facts out of the way first. Uh, Python 3 was released in uh, 2008. And the main difference between Python 2 and Python 3 is the handling of strings, or rather, text and bytes. Uh, text is what used to be, what used to be uh, Unicode in Python 2, and bytes is what used to be string. So now string is bytes in Python 2, and string is text in Python 3, which is confusing. Um, but there is uh, something that might help you. Bytes are measured in kilos, stored on disks, and transferred through cables. It's just a, a little helper for you. So in the future, please call them by the correct name. They're called bytes and text, or text and bytes. And never say Unicode or string again. I don't want to hear that words, these words. Um, so if you have an application, this is what you should do usually. It's called the Unicode sandwich, which means outside the application there's bytes, inside the application there's text, and whatever get, goes out or to the disk or over the cable is bytes again. But uh, as life is, there's lots of exceptions. Exam for example, transforms, uh, export, import, uh, file representations in applications may, might ring a bell. Um, type checking, and so on. So things are a bit more complex than they seem, uh, but we in Plone have had nice helpers and still have nice helpers uh, for that. Uh, one is, uh, used to be called Safe Unicode, now it's called Safe Text. This, they both work still, so you don't have to change your code. And the other is, uh, used to be Safe Encode, it's called Safe Bytes. And there's also a third one, it's called Safe Native String, which returns bytes in Python 3 and text in uh, bytes in Python 2, sorry, typo, and text in Python 3. Uh, so why is that important to have these? Because in Python 3, a couple of things changed. Um, the first thing is implicit conversion. Um, so if you have, compare a byte to a text, which string to Unicode, I'm never going to say that again. That was the last time I said that. Um, that's going to be true. And if you add byte to text, it's going to be text. And if you add text to byte, it's also, also going to be text. So that was uh, the fun Python 2 times. In Python 3, none of this uh, will work because uh, bytes is not text. It's something different. It's not equal. Uh, you can't uh, add uh, byte, to, uh, tech, byte to text or the other way around, but both don't work. Um, Switching to explicit conversion, also uh, stuff changed because you were able to encode uh, a byte to a byte in Python 2. You can't do that anymore in Python 3. Um, when you try to uh, encode a byte to a byte, you get an attribute error. And the same uh, is true with text. You could decode, decode in this case, text to text in Python 2. And in Python 3, that is no longer possible. Also, super fun, iterating. Uh, iterating over bytes is, well, Python th uh, 2, absolutely normal. In Python 3, super unexpected, uh, for, unless you are already a Python 3 developer. So uh, the last line is actually what you need when you need, when you need code that does exactly what it did in Python 2. So that whole thing is weird, and there are a ton more changes in Python 3 compared to Python 2. And most of them are really great, and you're going to love them once you start working on them, but except that you actually have to learn them. Uh, Python 3, 3.3, uh, was released in 2012, and I consider it as mature, uh, or a lot of people consider it as mature because, because we're lazy, because now you were able to do um, U-text, and, uh, which and in Python 2 was always allowed to do B bytes, 
which uh, allows you, uh, works nicer and allows you to write code that uh, runs in Python 2 and Python 3 at the same time. So there are U and B, you could call them no ops, but I had a longer discussion, they're actually not no ops, so in some cases, when, if you have weird encodings, uh, th stuff is actually happening there, but you don't have to care about that. Um, so text versus bytes is the main issue that you're gonna encounter when migrating code, and it makes much more sense in Python 3, so your life's gonna be better in the future. But writing code that works in Python 2 and Python 3 is not that easy. Um, okay, that's the technical stuff. Uh, let's talk about Brazil. Uh, the Plone conference in Brazil in 2013, Python 3.3 was released the day before. Pyramid already supported Python 3. Uh, Django was working on version 1. Uh, they were working on release 1.5 with uh, Python 3 support. Uh, Paul Everett and me, we had a little talk, and he told me <clears throat> that uh, Plone was in for a hard time. Uh, the end of life for Python 2 was scheduled for January 1st, 2020, and with this in mind, uh, I invited everybody to an open space, and we mingled in the hallway, um, sat around a huge circle. Eric showed, showed a slide. And uh, before that meeting, Paul told me he would not say a word, because he didn't want to push his opinion on me. He was not a Plone stakeholder, he didn't use Plone, he didn't develop Plone, he was just interested in us, our survival. So, who of you know Paul? So, those who know him, you might be aware that keeping his, your mouth shut is not his strongest suit. So, he said, uh, said this, and uh, we were uh, thinking about that problem for a long time. So the thing is, he was right, Zope was dead. In 2010, there was a Zope uh, summit in Germany, and it ended without any plans for the future. And uh, if you're really interested into that, in that, you can read a series of blog posts by Martin Fassen or talk to other people who were there. Some of them are here. And in the following years, since 2010, not a lot happened. And so it seemed likely uh, that Zoop will not be ported to Python 3. After that conference, uh, and after the conference sprint, a couple of us did a trip to Joao Pessoa on the east coast of Brazil. And uh, by the way, it was an excellent sprint and should be a hard requirement for every sprint to have sprint stand-ups in the pool. Um, a couple of us during that um, thing made a bike trip to uh, down the road, basically, to the easternmost part of the American continent. We had cheap and good caipirinhas. <laughs> Cheers. And uh, we had a dip in the ocean. And as I swam there, um, I started to get an anxious uh, because I became aware that uh, to the east, north, and south of me, there was nothing but a seemingly endless body of water. And beneath me, more of the same. So um, I headed back to the beach again, to my Caipirinha, and I dreamed of a coast uh, that seemed very far away. Let's put that away. Uh, let's give this coast a name, and let's call it Python 3. And we knew we needed to get there because the continent we were on was doomed. I'm not talking about the Brazilian elections, even though the Brazilians might disagree that doomed is Brazil. Um, so, Plone needed something to carry it across. Uh, Substance D was all the rage back then, and uh, Paul Everett was an understandably, understandably interested to get us uh, across to uh, Pyramid, and uh, a lot of ideas got kicked back and forth. Uh, for example, Spanky, being his over-enthusiastic self, uh, said, sure, let's just rewrite it all on Pyramid, we'll be done by Christmas. Um, <laughs> that was the year he joined the board, and uh, both things didn't yield very many, a lot of results, actually. So, fun fact, Substance D was released yesterday. Um, version 1.0, this is not a joke. Yes. Um, other ideas were kicked around, like taking over the whole development of Zope, and, but to keep it short, basically we had no 
fucking clue what we're going to do, and Paul's words sounded a bit worrying for, to us. Uh, but you know what happens to prophets of doom? They're, they're proven wrong most of the times, and Zope was not dead. In, actually, in large parts due to the renaissance of the Zope developer community, um, is, is that, uh, the fact becoming true that we can land to Python 3. Sail over the seas. Okay, enough lame met metaphors. Um, last year in Barcelona, uh, Eric said that before uh, already. Uh, Eric merged the ZOP4 PLIP into the Plone 5.2 master branch, and the work to get there actually took two years to finish. The PLIP uh, Hannes wrote was innocently, innocent, how do you say that word? Innocently called uh, Update ZOP Dependencies and uh, was created now three years ago. And you see the PLIP still says we were, we're not able to switch to pyramid of substance D soon. Somewhere in the text is there. So that was still an, an, an option. So after a year of unsteady development, we finally had all tests passing on ZOP 4.0 Alpha 1. And from the ashes rose Hanno Schlichting and broke everything again. Uh, at least that's, what, that's how I felt when all of our tests started to fail again. Uh, the ZOP community had actually kicked back to life again, not 100% the same people, there were a couple, couple new coming in. And development had picked up, and I remember in Boston, after the conference and the sprint, I was uh, prepared to write an angry, angry email. Uh, I was working with Jens on the ZOP4 uh, stuff, and I tried to write an angry email, how dare you break all of our stuff? Uh, fortunately, David talked me out of it and uh, made me realize that it makes much more sense to be grateful that the ZOP community actually started working on that again. Um, but you, s you need to understand that at that time, um, ZOP and Plone were not on the best terms. We decided, had decided to fork a couple of ZOP uh, packages because the responsiveness to even security-related issues had virtually ceased to exist. So <clears throat> it seemed like ZOP was incontrollably twitching, sometimes dead and sometimes partly alive. Instead of being angry, we were happy, so um, that all worked out. Uh, so even though a lot of time went into the sprints, it was uh, clear that Plone would not fix the ZOP migration problem itself, because what was ported in the first place was the ZOP component architecture packages, ZOP components, ZOP interface, and all that stuff, and the ZODB. Uh, ZOP2 itself uh, was not touched for a long time, took a while. But uh, PLIP 1351 was finally merged at the conference in Barcelona, and the new branch uh, was ready to start porting Plone, porting Plone to Python 3, because uh, Michael Hovitz had created a branch uh, of ZOP that was running on Python 3. So how do you port Plone when you have 250 packages deep dependency chain, and none of that stuff is actually running on Python 3 yet? Actually, a lot of them are, but uh, none of your own stuff. Um, there was no way to test what we were doing because the whole testing stack was not ported. You couldn't start up Plone. You couldn't even run build out in Python 3 itself. So right at the sprint in Barcelona, a bunch of people started uh, going through all the packages in our dependencies, Plone dot, Plone uh, pa these packages, and tried to migrate them to Python 3. Uh, with strategy number one, flying blind. So we used a couple of nice tools, Six, Sixer and Python Modernize. We tried our best at uh, educated guessing, and we tested the changes that we did in Python 2. So as long as the Python 2 tests were not breaking, uh, we had not yet broken Plone, at least. So again, we were flying blind because we could neither test nor run Plone. But after, um, at a, who I'm missing something. But there was a, the, at the uh, sprint in Innsbruck uh, in February this year, uh, a moment came when I finally were, uh, started to approach the problem from the other perspective. Others were still working on the test infrastructure and porting packages, wrote whiskey setups and whatnot. 
And I took the liberty and started to try to start up Plone in Python 3. So you have to know that when you start up Plone in Python 3, and it's not Python 3 compatible like any other package, it'll, it'll stop. It won't finish the startup we sit on any syntax error and import errors. And I had, about, I had to fix about 500 of those that we had missed using these tools that we had used before. And only weeks later, full of work, on March 19, 2018, this year, I was on a train to the Plone Tagung in Berlin, and Max, where's Max? Somewhere. Hey, Max. You were snoring to the right of me, loudly, um, keeping me awake. And finally, Plone managed to start up. For the very first time in Python 3, I was able to create a site. It was a great day. But there was nothing yet to see in the browser since rendering and theming was all still broken. Uh, but at least in Python it worked, and I could PDB into the site and like see stuff happening there. Uh, and after that, uh, Plontagung in Berlin with uh, very important contributions from uh, David, Alessandro, and Michael Hovitz, uh, theming and rendering started to work, and we were actually able to look at Plone and start to test features. Uh, there was still a lot of there was still a lot of stuff broken, um, but we were able to create a nightly demo, put that out to the public, and have people test that. Uh, and uh, very true to the tradition of the Plone community, we did not test any of that. Or did anyone ever open that website? Hands up. Yay, good. We could have, Stefan, we could have just gone to the beer garden at that sprint. Um, so we'd rather not test and complain afterwards about the total lack of quality assurance. Um, the third perspective started to, uh, approach started to become realistic as well. Uh, fast forward through a summer of joyful bugs that needed fixing test isolation issues that are heartbreaking and need to be hunted down. And there was uh, even the very epic sprint in Halle, the Salt Lab sprint that you might have heard about yet already. And one week after that sprint, on October 13th, 2018, we finally had 10,000 passing tests in Python 2.7, 3.6, and 3.7. That was a good day. Another good day, a lot of good days. So in the following week, we pressed a lot of buttons, and Python 3 support finally landed in Plone Master, and uh, on to a release. Not so fast. Thank you. Um, first, ZOP4 needed to be released uh, for beta, beta 7, because a lot of stuff changed there. That was done this Monday. And since then, Eric and Moritz and a lot of others were busy releasing package after package after package. And actually, 10 minutes ago, Eric and me did a fist bump, no, actually half an hour ago, before my talk, because we finally released uh, Plone 5.2 Alpha 1 pending on this Plone org, and it's ready for the grabs. So I'm, I'm going to still demo the core dev because that it wouldn't, I wouldn't have time for the other thing. So uh, let me show you. Oh, you're not seeing anything. So this is, uh, after a lot of work, everything looks the same. Excellent. <laughs> Super boring. So this is the front page. If you, if you really want, you can edit it. And everything works. Da, da, da. Try to find the save button. So uh, there's also a couple of development tools that were ported already, including the debug toolbar. And uh, to, so that you know I'm not kidding you, there is the, here is the Python version. And there is the, uh, you can do interactive uh, PDB stuff here. So you know that add-on. That um, should be in everybody develop, every developer's toolbox. Um, there's also, um, hang on. How do I close that? Like this. Uh, during the sprint, we also ported um, easy form. It's not, there's not a final release out uh, yet that runs on Python 3, but it, it works. So porting add-ons is 
not that hard. And you can, here, you can create a form. And also, I ported Plone Tiles to Python 3, which, ah, oh God, which allows the following to work. So this is Volto running on Plone on Python 3. So that also works. Since you all know Plone, I'm, that's all I'm going to demo. So let's continue with this. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so you might ask yourself, who who paid for this all? Who did? Who made that possible? No one paid for it, as it's usually in the Plone community it was all pro bono and a community effort. And it's time to thank a lot of people who uh, did a lot of work there. Um, mostly, because they're all not here, uh, the many people in the ZOP community, uh, Michael Hovitz, Stefan Aldner, Hallo Hanno Schlichting, and Tress Sievers, and many, many others. Uh, Marius Gedminas, Jason Madden, Jim Fulton, a lot of people who were uh, busy and uh, helped us getting stuff uh, released and merged and tested, and they uh, contributed in a big way. And uh, there are a lot of people from the Plone community who were um, very active in helping there. This list is definitely not complete. Uh, but since uh, yesterday, when Eric uh, said, please stand up, if you worked on that, only four people stood up, there are some more. We, it's not only four people who did that. And without all of us, uh, that wouldn't have been possible. So you might think a life of a person who's doing Python 3 uh, uh, porting for Plone is terrible. It actually is not. I, um, I got to go to a lot of sprints. This was Finland uh, in the middle of the night in summer, actually. Um, this is the Bushenshank sprint. We actually worked in that hut. We also emptied a whole fridge of white wine. It was huge, that fridge. But, you know, we're Plone. Uh, that's also a Bushenshank sprint. Uh, Innsbruck, uh, fun sprint at home. Uh, also, um, just an excuse, uh, a mini sprint to meet people and get sa go sailing with Eric. That was great. And uh, the smallest sprint ever in my garden. <laughs> and the biggest sprint uh, in Salt Labs uh, in, in Halle. So, um, to thank all the people who did that work, it would be really, really nice if you would not decide that this Python 3 stuff is for sissies, and you'd rather continue to use Python 2. Um, instead, you should adopt Python 3 in your Plone projects, and maybe hire us and others who helped uh, to help you. So, you should go, how, how should you go about porting to Python 3 your own projects? First thing, plan ahead. You only got 14 months left. Um, after those, you'll have to tell your clients that you're running on a super secure system on an unsupported and terribly outdated programming language. That might be okay if you're running your dentist's website, but if you're doing that for the armed forces of the uh, University of the Armed Forces or the CIA, this will simply not do. So there's a simple <coughs> brackets. Uh, there are six steps you'll have to follow to upgrade to Python 3. First is upgrade to Plone 5.2. Uh, still use Python 2.7 for that. Shouldn't be too hard. The changes between 5.1 and 5.2 are uh, not that big. Uh, there are really nice features in that. Eric told, uh, talked about them, so you're going to gain them in, as well. Second, uh, drop archetypes. That's not asking too much because, like, I wrote the migration for default types in 2013, and we had added helper methods and even a form where you can click your migrations together in 2015. So you had ample warning. Third, uh, and mm, I don't know, that's probably the easiest of all of these. Uh, migrate your code to Python 3. Do that without a database, uh, and write your code that it supports Python 2 and Python 3. Um, if you have a small add-on, your code is in a small add-on, just start up and fix whatever pops up. If it's a bit bigger, use uh, Python Modernize first and do the exact same thing with tests. Um, 
The only really terrible thing is uh, some serialization issues, emails maybe, and dog tests. Uh, that's scary sometimes. And test everything manually. That is not tested. Uh, number four, do exactly the same with add-ons that you didn't uh, write yourself. The good thing is everyone benefits who uses these add-ons. Number five is migrate your database. I'm not going to say anything to you to the, about that. Go to David's talk tomorrow. It's very important. That's actually not that easy, but he's doing all the work, so it's going to be easy for you. Uh, there will be a downtime or a read-only time in your database uh, unless uh, someone has a lot of time and money and uh, will do some in-place stuff, but probably not. Uh, number six, done, deploy on Python 3, and please test your setup uh, early because we're now using Waitress, a whiskey uh, publisher uh, server, and that's, that's it. It's easy. Um, you should start that process as early as possible because you're going to have unexpected problems, probably, add-ons that you didn't know that you had actually used, or that actually used archetypes and you didn't know about that. 2019 might be much busier for you than you expect. And it, I would not wait for a final release of Plone 5.2 to start the planning and testing of that migration and hire experts to help you if you get stuck. You can and you should work iteratively. Um, that means you do not have to do everything at the same time. Uh, you can migrate from Plone 4.3 with Lingua Plone away to Plone Up Multilingual from archetypes to dexterity on Python 5.2 while still running Python 3. You can even run include with dexterity on Python 3. Uh, I don't think anyone tested lingua plone on Python 3, but you can still run, it might still, uh, on Python uh, plone 5.2, sorry. On Python 3, it'll ne never work. Um, but you can still run archetypes on plone 5.2, but only in Python 2. Uh, instead uh, of doing everything at the same time, go step by step and remember that your Python 3 compatible code can be run on Python 2 without any issues. Uh, you might want to know when there is a final release. 5 Alpha 1, 52 Alpha 1 is out now, and 52 should be out in February. That's uh, cutting it close, I know, but we want to give you at least 10 months of time. Uh, to test and start your migrations, and we're going to do uh, 521, 522 bug fix releases if you find any bugs and maybe even help fix those. That would be nice. So, <clears throat> there are some to do's still. Um, those people who really need a replacement for FTP or web dev need to figure out how to do that. I'm pretty sure that the core developer community will not provide that. Uh, there may be an option if you're interested in that and uh, look, need to look at that. Uh, data mi mi database migrations need to be finished and documented. Um, also, we need an upgrade and porting guide that needs to be written and published and read and corrected because if there's something wrong, thank you. Um, some important add-ons need to be ported and released so that it makes easier makes it easier for non-technical people to who use these uh, to to adopt that version, and we should have some performance tests, which we don't. Come to the sprint. These uh, these are all major sprint topics uh, for this weekend, and um, bring your add-ons. Um, I and maybe others will be available to help you migrate add-ons that you need in your products. Uh, I say help, not migrate, because I don't want to make, give the impression that I will do all the Python 3 migrations from here, for, here on. Uh, so please bring a core dev build out with Python 3. As it's explained, in a, there's a ticket 2041 in CMF Plone. Uh, I updated that uh, the day before yesterday, so it, that should work. Um, bring that to the sprint, add the add-on you want to migrate to the uh, configuration, and um, I'll help you migrate uh, your add-ons. So I anticipated a couple of questions, so I'm going to ask them myself because that's quicker. 
you can, you can add yourself, your own questions afterwards. So what about Python 4? Uh, Python 4 is not going to be a problem because Python 4 is supposed to be a minor normal release, upgrade release, like between uh, Python 3.7 and uh, 3.8. They just don't want to have a, th a 3.10 version, so they call that Python 4. So don't worry about that. Um, when will Plone drop support for Python 2? Um, the answer is not before we have a very good reason to do so. Maybe in Plone 7, it might allow us to clean up some code and remove these lines, if 6, Py 2, then blah, 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 do something. Uh, but it would not... Uh, at the moment, we don't have a reason. If uh, Ramon or someone else comes up with a very good reason that uh, it runs in async now, which wouldn't work in Python 2, we might do that earlier. But uh, in, not in Python, not in Plone 6. What about Zob 5? Next question. Uh, there's no plan, no roadmap uh, yet, but there were discussions for further cleanup, speed up, uh, and stuff. But um, if if you're interested in that, you need to uh, contact Michael Hovitz or others from the Zope community. Um, but it's not going to be as big a change as from Zope 2 to Zope 4. That was a nightmare. Okay. No. Don't, don't try to postpone the inevitable. That is a really bad idea. We're a small community compared to others, and uh, we're supporting two Python versions, developing and maintaining two front ends. Um, we don't have the, uh, the power to also maintain two content type frameworks. Don't ask for that. How do we replace FTP and WebDev? There may be a solution in a WSGI middleware, at least for WebDev. There is something, it's called WSGI-DAV. WSGI-DAV.readthedocs.io is the documentation. Uh, who's interested and can check that out. FTP, I don't know, that feels so very 80s. Um, I don't know. Um, why did you, yes, why not? Um, so, Ramon answered that question before uh, at, in the talk in uh, the room above. Uh, there is no equivalent add-on ecosystem. Feature equality is not achieved, and it's not a replacement. It is a completely different thing. It has a reason to exist on its own. It is not the future of Plone 7. Maybe Plone 8? Maybe 7 too? I don't know. We do these big changes in small versions. Uh, there is no, no migration path. Different database. So many things. So, can I now use async and await in my Plone projects? You can, but it won't really help you because it's still Plone and Zope. Um, feel free to experiment and change that. Okay, my favorite question. <clears throat> Are you kidding me? <laughs> so yes, Python 3 will make Plone run faster, probably. We don't know by how much. We have no performance tests. We need performance tests. Performance tests don't just appear like magic. They need to be written, configured. There needs to be a server that does that. There need to be some historical metrics. Um, I have the uh, impression that 5.1 is actually slower than 5.2, uh, 5.0. I don't know why, because I've never tested it properly. Uh, so we need these at the sprints. People could work on that. Yoni Orponen, he said he, has a, he, ha he knows how to do that, but he doesn't have the time. It's the same as everything. Can I run the same database in Python 2 and Python 3? No, you can't. Probably not, unless it's easy form. No. But it will prevent Plone's market share from dropping to zero. So it was a question of survival and not a question uh, of 
huge marketability. It's just a, a total marketing fail to say we're running on an outdated programming language. That's a tough one um, because nobody has tested that yet. Uh, we are shipping with a Waitress setup by default. Waitress is actually a um, historically evolved from, um, how's it called? Medusa, so from Zoap. Uh, so it's close to our hearts. Uh, you should wait for documentation, we're still learning, or you should write the documentation yourself. The setup at the moment is still the same, so how you run it, uh, it's bin instance FG, bin instance start, and it runs Medusa because that's a new dependency for us. So for a, um, that actually, we, I merged that two hours ago. Uh, before that it was bin whiskey, uh, now we made it a bit simpler for you. We're still learning, and uh, you should help us. Um, probably. Do you have a Windows laptop? We can test it at the Sprint. Uh, production tools. Um, backup is probably not working, because it's not part of the core dev and not tested uh, yet. But uh, that would be a nice Sprint topic, because it's a, it's a, rec a recipe is also an add-on. It's a PyP package. Um, ZRS and role storage probably work. I think there are releases that support Python 3, although we have not tried because we're, we just made a release an hour ago. Um, so everything has to be tested, and the people who are testing that are you. There's no secret clone core developer cabal who tests and fixes everything. Um, this is a community job. This is an important question. Uh, Bob templates, plone uh, packages already work in Python 3. So the, the, uh, the package that we create during the uh, mastering plone training is called plone conf, uh, plone, yeah, con, plone conf site that works in Python 3. But Bob templates, plone might not because it does a lot of string stuff and file system stuff. And uh, same is uh, true with uh, CLI. So these need to be ported. And uh, that's all I have for questions. Maybe you have some more. Please. Alexander, okay, maybe you answer, ask the question. I repeat it for the video. Do I um, do I put a label on it in uh, on PyPy or how do I show it? There is uh, tr we have trove. No, you're not answering these questions, Alexander. I'm, he's asking me questions. Thank you. <laughs> you can answer the questions in your talks. Um, so there, uh, each package has trove cl classifiers in the setup py, and you just add support for the Python version that you're testing. Uh, we're testing with Python 3.6 and 3.7. And we are, um, yes, you can add a tag to a pull request. That would be nice. And uh, once it's working, we make a release on Python 3, uh, on PyP. And also, we have this, uh, the list of most favored add-ons. I guess uh, there should be a checkbox next to these if they run on Python 3. And uh, just send an email to, uh, or yeah, make a, Make a ticket and say, please add that to the, uh, to the list of add-ons and that it's running on Python 3. Thank you. Another one. Did I ask all the questions that you had in your head? That was my intention. David. Uh, similar question. If I'm porting an add-on, how can I test my add-on to make sure that it continues to work in both Python 2 and Python 3. That's an excellent version. Uh, you probably need to use Travis for that with a test matrix. And you, so you need to update the build out to use Plone 5.2 alpha 1. Please not. Is not. Um, let's do, we can discuss that over the sprint. It needs to go in the, in the porting guide. Um, well, we're using, we should use talks for the test wrapper thing, uh, but a lot of old add-ons do not have that yet. Um, let's, we need to figure something out. 
I pour, mostly ported stuff that is um, from the, somewhere in the core uh, in the core dev, and I just used the core dev and added my add-on to the test eggs, and to the eggs I didn't commit that, and then ran the tests against the new Plon stack because there was no Plon release. You can do that as well locally. There's a local. There's a lo in the ticket for how how to run Plon. I'm going to open that. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm um, going to show you the number, maybe say you, tell you the number again. That would be. Twenty forty one. Twenty forty one. That has the documentation. Okay. More questions. Um, so j just to confirm the the normal promise around like security will be sort of covered for the last two major plone versions doesn't only counts if you're running like when six is released, hopefully before two seven finishes, then it's five two on three. Like you I I didn't get that question. Sorry. Can you repeat that? With, what do we tell customers in terms of security um, uh, with regard, like basically when two seven is 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 gone, we can't make any promises, right? So we can't say that last two um, Python uh, Plone versions are supported anymore, can we? Well, that's that's a question for the release uh, for the security team. Plo, we we never pl the Plone uh, never makes a promise for the operating system or the programming language. We only support Plone itself. Yeah. So um, that is just not our concern. We know of this, this issue, but it's, we don't make guarantees and we don't break these guarantees because we never made them, these. So maybe from the point of the security team, at the th stage we are at the moment, we still support Python versions in several setups that are already outdated and out of the security support. As we, as the Plone security team, only support Plone and uh, in some ways the ZOAP packages, it depends on you if you're running a system. There are solutions like Red Hat Enterprise that will support Python 2.7 till another few years, but is, yeah. Don't, don't, don't advertise that. But you should Thank you. switch and we'll next, support Adam. Next question. Anyone? Okay. Thank you very much for your time. Enjoy the lightning talks.